What is going on, guys? Keel for 88 here, and today we have the 1,000 subscriber special mock draft. Uh, we finally did it. It was a grind to get here. It took a few years to get the channel growing, but uh, you guys love the film content I've been putting out, and I'm excited to produce more content like this going forward. So with the draft in a few days, I figured it'd be time to get my own mock draft out there and show you guys my thoughts on some of these players. Uh, if you want to, I'll link my podcast below where you can check out our the top quarterback rankings, running back rankings, receivers. We broke those all down in, in just under an hour uh, for each position. So Check that out, um, Peel Pro Dynasty Show on Spotify. Um, so thanks again, and let's just hop right into it. I'm so excited to do this mock draft. Uh, I'm Honestly, at this point, maybe it's a bit oversaturated with mock draft content, but I want to get my own picks out there to see how right I was or how wrong I was. So um, let's hop right into it. First off, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, this one's pretty easy. We're going Trevor Lawrence. Uh, this one's been set in stone for quite a while. Um, great prospect. I don't think he's a generational prospect like some people might be touting him as, but definitely the safest quarterback out of an impressive uh, class of quarterbacks. And I think he's going to do really well there in Jacksonville, sort of a culture change for them. They bring in Urban Meyer. You've got your franchise quarterback, already some nice pieces in place. So uh, slam dunk pick for Jacksonville. Up next, we got the New York Jets and they just traded away Sam Darnold. So you know they're taking a quarterback and I am going to take Zach Wilson here. Um, he's the number two QB on my board. Uh, electric player, super fun to watch, can make off-platform throws, um, throw on the move. So a very fun prospect. Uh, maybe not as definitely not as safe as some of these other quarterbacks, but he's got good upside. And um, I mean, he's probably going to be thrown right into it in New York, um, where they have some pieces around them. They brought in Corey Davis. They've got Mims, but a lot of unproven talent. So it'll be interesting to see how how well he would acclimate to that situation. But I got Zach Wilson there. All right, the pick everyone wants to try and predict right now, it's the San Francisco 49ers. They traded up to get a quarterback. It's just a question of which one. And for a while, it, the Mac Jones talk has been high. We've got Justin Fields who got some hype. But my guy for, for a while now for them has been Trey Lance, quarterback out of North Dakota State. Uh, I feel like this guy would just fit the offense really well. And, you know, Mac Jones may be a safer bet at quarterback, but you don't have the upside of a guy like Trey Lance, who has the physical ability, the, the throwing ability, um, where he still has a lot of room to grow. But, I mean, we didn't, he didn't play this past season, but in 2019 he had the miraculous, what, 42 touchdown, no interception, no turnover a uh, year. So takes care of the football, which is great, which Jimmy G has struggled with. And, like, I could see, you know, them taking one of these other quarterbacks. I don't really like Fields there just because he has sort of issues processing quickly and like his pocket awareness isn't great, which is kind of what hampers Jimmy G when he's under pressure. He really struggles. So um, Trey Lance, I think he's a little less raw than people think, honestly. I'm interested to see how quickly they would implement him. But uh, yeah, definitely a high upside quarterback that I, I would like to see there at three. And I think they might actually do it and stun everyone. And then we have another interesting pick. I mean, the draft gets real interesting right after three. So now we've got the Atlanta Falcons and Kyle Pitts has kind of been the hot topic right now for them. But I think I'm going to go quarterback and I'm going to go Justin Fields. And the reason behind this, I think the Falcons, it's just like they're not going to be in the situation to pick top five again for a while, I think. I mean, and when you have a chance to take your franchise quarterback, I mean, Matt Ryan's what? 35, 36, he's getting a little older, probably still got some solid years, but I think you're just, you have an opportunity here to take your franchise guy. Fields has crazy upside. He's got a little, a few things he needs to work on at the next level, but Atlanta would be a perfect situation for them to, to groom him behind Matt Ryan. So if they don't do that, honestly, I could see Pitts or this would be an optimal spot to trade down because God knows they need help on defense as well. They've got a few areas they need help, but I just feel like you can go here, grab your franchise guy. Um, either way, I feel like at four, it's going to end up being a quarterback, whether it's the Falcons or someone trading up to, to grab one. And then another interesting pick, the Cincinnati Bengals. We've got um, Jamar Chase or Penny Sewell. I, I've been leaning Sewell most of this time, and I still do, but I think I'm going to have them taking Jamar Chase here. 
just because I don't think they're the the elude like looking at Jamar Chase pairing him up with Joe Burrow. I think it's going to be hard for them not to do that after seeing what they did in in 2019 together. And it's it's tough because you know it's a deeper wide receiver class, but it's also a pretty deep offensive lineman class. So I feel like right at the top of the second, they can still go out and grab an offensive lineman and they grab an elite wide receiver prospect here. So I've kind of come around on chase for them just because, well, as long as they take offensive line in the second, because if they don't, then I'm completely out on this pick, but Jamar chase to the Bengals. All right. Now onto the Miami dolphins. Um, They traded down and traded back up. They've got to have some player in mind here. I'm wondering if it was Jamar Chase and they lost him here, but uh, I think they're in a perfect situation just to still go grab an offensive weapon, and that's Kyle Pitts. Uh, one of the best tight end prospects I've watched maybe ever, which, I mean, isn't a crazy long time, like six years or so, but uh, just a freakish athlete. I mean, if he came out as a wide receiver in this class, he'd probably be top three. Uh, he's still a solid blocker, um, but, you know, he's just going to be a weapon on the offensive side, and with Tua sort of struggling this past season, you give him a safety blanket. I mean, honestly, even more of a safety blanket. This guy can make all the plays, um, contest and catch anything. So this is someone Tua can be confident in to just throw it up, and he can make plays. So Kyle Pitts, the Dolphins at six. I like that. Now the Lions, it gets weird here too. Um, you know, they saw some of the top weapons go off the board here. They're pretty – uh, they don't really have much for receivers. They lost get Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, both gone. And they could go Waddle or Devonta here, but I think they just got to start building this thing from the ground up. They got so many needs. Um, and I think we're going to grab Sewell here. Just not a glamorous pick, but you got to start somewhere. New coaching regime. Um, you, if you're going to use Jared Goff as a quarterback, you got to keep him clean because he sucks under pressure. So bring in Sewell, you might actually have a chance to, you know, do stuff with him this season. Um, the offense probably still won't be great, but he'll golf will have a better chance to, you know, succeed possibly if they have an elite um, left tackle. On to eight, we're going to do another offensive lineman here for the Carolina Panthers. That's Rashawn Slater. Again, this is a weird spot because um, they traded for Sam Darnold and I'm sort of thinking, they could possibly go quarterback if one's available here, but how about we protect Sam? He he had a rough start to his career in New York. I uh, was just never figured it out. And honestly, I'm not the biggest Darnold fan, but he was kind of set up to fail from the beginning. Um, so they've already got some solid weapons out there. DJ Moore. Um, actually, they lost Curtis Samuel. They brought in David Moore. So maybe they could use a few more for him, but I feel like you want to protect uh, your new quarterback, Sam Darnold, and give him a chance to succeed. So we're going to Sean Slater to the Panthers. Broncos at nine, and I'm going to take Micah Parsons. Maybe not a huge need for them. I mean, uh, AJ Johnson has been solid for them, but like not glamorous. Um, I think this is just a player you can plug in on defense and he's a difference maker, uh, sort of like, guys in the past like Devin White and Roquan Smith were their playmakers and Micah Parsons you know they played him off the edge a little bit too as well uh he's just a versatile player and you know might need a little work at the next level but he'll be in a good spot to to maybe not get thrown right into it but I like Micah Parsons in Denver up next we got the Dallas Cowboys and for me it comes down to which cornerback they like or Jerry likes um, I could go either or with these. Honestly, I think I like JC Horn more, but um, maybe Jerry goes with the Bama guy and Patrick Sertain. We're going to do that at corner. Um, I mean, just checks all the boxes athletically and, and on the tape. I mean, this for a defense that really struggled against the pass, um, getting a lockdown quarter like Sertain would be huge for Dallas. New York Giants are up next, and this one I feel like is going to be a bit of a, I don't know if it's a reach technically. This is going to be my, one of my surprise picks to the draft here, but I'm doing Jalen Phillips, edge rusher out of Miami. Um, he's been climbing up draft boards for a while. I think he's definitely the best edge rusher in this class, just a freaky guy, um, can do it all. Um, and he's got, I feel like he's going to be a game changer at the next level. He's got some medical red flag, a med medical red flag with concussion history, I believe, but um, I don't think that really was much this past season. Um, 
when he played. So yeah, Jalen Phillips, um, they could really use like a high end pass rusher. I could see them going receiver here as well, but uh, we're going to take the high upside uh, rusher in Phillips. All right, Eagles, this is another one where I could see them go on a couple ways. Uh, everyone's going to want to say wide receiver here. You got Jalen Waddle and Devonta Smith on the board. How don't you take a receiver? But I'm going to go cornerback. I'm taking J.C. Horn just because, I mean, this guy's an elite cornerback prospect. The Eagles have sucked in the secondary for a while. Uh, this is a guy that can come in with sort of swagger, physicality, and, and really change a, a defense, uh, especially in coverage. So I know you kind of want to take a receiver here. I mean, you got Jalen Rager, and then you're kind of running Greg Ward, Travis Fulgham possibly. But um, the wide receiver class, like I mentioned earlier, is deeper. So I think you could still grab a solid receiver in the second and get an elite cornerback prospect in J.C. Horn. So I like this pick for Philadelphia. Chargers up next. We're going to protect Justin Herbert and take Christian Darisaw. Um, I mean, this is feels like kind of a chalk pick. I've been seeing a lot. Uh, just help out Justin Herbert. Keep him safe. Keep the franchise um, safe. Uh, if, if Farley didn't have the red flags at corner, and maybe consider him there. But we're going to go Darisaw. Then another not-so-sexy pick, but one that I feel fits well, Elijah Vera Tucker to the Vikings. Uh, just help out that offensive line. If they're sticking with Kirk Cousins, uh, you're going to want to keep him upright. Uh, I mean, they're a dark horse. You know, maybe they want to go crazy and go get a quarterback if possible. But, I mean, I guess with Mac Jones here, they could. I'm still just not that high on Mac Jones. So, uh, it'll be interesting. They could be a dark horse quarterback team, but we're just going to take um, a solid offensive lineman here. All right, so this felt fell perfectly to the New England Patriots. They need a quarterback. They get Mac Jones, and I worry about what would happen if Mac Jones went to New England. I feel like this is the perfect guy for Belichick, uh, probably the best landing spot for Jones, honestly. And I don't think he's going to fall to 15 as much as I'm not. You know, I, I like him. I just don't think his ceiling is as high as some of these other guys. Uh, but this is a perfect fit in New England. I could see them trading up for him as well. Uh, Bill Belichick making a, a draft day move to go get his guy. But yeah, Mac Jones in New England would be great. Great pick for them. Now we're on to the Cardinals. And I want to go again, Caleb Farley sort of. But I just think right now with these receivers falling, I'm going to go Devonta Smith maybe against the grain a little bit here, but you know, you got DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk is a fun deep threat, but you bring in a Devonta Smith, a Heisman Trophy winning receiver. Um, the film is incredible. Uh, the analytics, maybe crowd doesn't like him as much, but at 16 here, I think this is a great value. Something for Cliff Kingsbury to, to work with and another weapon for Kyler Murray to play with. So yeah, Devonta Smith in Arizona, that, that offense would be pretty fun. All right, next one, Raiders, and this one feels like a slam dunk for me. We're going Tevin Jenkins. They've been losing uh, offensive linemen left and right, just releasing, trading, and you get this guy out of Oklahoma State who's just a mauler, an absolute beast, fits the Gruden mentality, and really addresses a hole that they've opened up this offseason. So Tevin Jenkins, great pick for, for the Raiders here. Dolphins back up again. They took Kyle Pitts in the first. And gosh darn it, we're gonna give we're gonna give Tua all the weapons. We're grabbing Jalen Waddle. He's still here at 18, which is crazy. Um, I'm not sure if that'll happen on draft day with trades and whatnot. But uh, you give Tua Waddle and Pitts. I mean, I could argue Waddle as the wide receiver one in this class. Possibly he's got um, Tyreek Hill qualities to him. Yeah, you can clip that um, little clickbait, but. Yeah, I, I think you give Tua, you know, all these weapons, give them a chance to succeed. We see other teams do it with these young quarterbacks. You got to put them in a, a spot where they can be successful. And uh, no excuses if he he wouldn't if he can't be successful with those two plus you know Devonte Parker out there, um, then you might be in trouble. Washington football team at nineteen. I am gonna take JOK out of Notre Dame. They've sort of been lacking that mainstay at linebacker for a while not really I'm trying to think of who the last notable linebacker was these past few years it's been 
um, solid production. You got like Cole Holcomb and whatnot, but not, we're not, haven't had that guy. And I think JOK, um, a versatile player played defensive back as well. Maybe give me a little Isaiah Simmons vibes with that, but a versatile player on defense, probably slide in more as a linebacker at the next level, but a, a nice chess piece for that defense that is, is improving in a team that is looking pretty good on paper for next season. Bears are a weird team. They need a quarterback, but I don't know how they're going to get one without trading up. They tried to get Russ, couldn't get him. Um, but I think we're going to finally go Caleb Farley. The, the value is too good here. Uh, Kyle Fuller is gone. You bring in a lockdown corner um, who has who has the medical red flag. But, um, you know, you're in a division playing against guys like Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson now. Um I feel like Caleb Farley is a, is a really good value here for the Chicago Bears. Colts up next. Um, this one, not a sexy pick. We're going all O-line. Um, I think it was, was it Costanzo left this offseason? One of their offensive linemen's gone. Uh, need someone to fill that hole as a tackle. Uh, Alabama offensive lineman pedigree. Um, I feel like this is just a solid pick for, for Indy. Now we're on to the Titans, pick 22, and they would have liked to get probably Caleb Farley here. I don't know if they were going to take Greg Newsom. It's between these two, I think, and I'm going Rashad Bateman. He's, he reminds me of Corey Davis a little bit, actually, who they just got rid of. Um, but Bateman, super fun prospect, um, checks a lot of boxes analytically and on the film. I think he fits that number I mean, he could be a number one, but A.J. Brown is going to be the focal point of the offense. You already know that. But uh, with all the targets vacated from Corey Davis and John Smith, I mean, if Bateman goes to the Titans, I could see, like, for fantasy players, pretty quick production. And I think he'd be a really good fit there in Tennessee. All right, Jets on the clock. Uh, we're – Man, this guy's been falling probably a little too far. Quiddy Pay, I guess, on the, the predictive board here on TDN. Um, whoops. Um, I guess on the predictive board, he's number 23. So right on the dot, but Quiddy Pay to the to Jets, Robert Sala in town. You know, he wants to build a really nice defense. And Quiddy Pay is a guy, he's he's pretty athletic. Um, maybe didn't test as well as we thought, but uh just a great all-around defensive lineman maybe isn't the most flashy but a guy that's really going to help out the Jets defense and I I like where their defense is going and then just got to hope we took Zach Wilson earlier so you just got to hope that he hits all right here's the pick that we've been seeing a lot Steelers we're going Najee Harris for a while I didn't I still don't know if they're going to do it it's been all the talk honestly this is like the perfect fit for a, a Najee um, just a rough runner, big dude, um, but can really do it all. He's my RB1 in this class and is great as a receiver as well. So um, if they, either, they're either going to do this or go offensive lineman most likely. So um, there's a drop off these running backs after like the top three. So let's just go grab the stud and grab an offensive lineman in the second. So Najee on the Steelers would be pretty fun. Jaguars up next. Um, I think we're going to go Trevon Merrick. Safety class isn't all that special, but uh, this is a guy, pretty decent value here at the end of the first. We already got Trevor Lawrence. He could maybe go receiver, but they've got solid weapons. Uh, DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault. They just signed Marvin Jones. So I feel all right with it, what they have in place there. Uh, this is a guy that'll help out in the back end. I know their safeties aren't that great. So I feel like this is a pretty good pick for Jacksonville. All right, on to the Browns. And I am going to go, you know, edge rusher has been a popular choice here. There's a couple options, but I, their linebackers are not good. And I think we got to take Zayvon Collins here. Um, they, yeah, the, the linebackers that are putting out there weren't producing much. The defense in general really wasn't the best. Uh, they got Miles Garrett. Um, I think, did they bring in Clowney? Was that official or am I dreaming? I feel like that was a thing that happened. Um, but yeah, Zayvon Collins is a guy I really like. Honestly, I hope he falls to the Packers, but a uh, big dude, but he's versatile, wasn't played as an edge rusher as well. And I think he'll, he's a nice fit for, uh, it feels, fills a need for the Browns and it's a really good value at the end of the first. So I think this is a really good pick for Cleveland. 
The Ravens, they got to go edge rusher. It's just been a revolving door the past few years at the edge rusher position. And I think I'm going to go Joe Tryon, another one of these versatile guys. Um, Yeah, they really just need help here. And I feel like he's probably the best available. Well, there's maybe one guy they could go to, but I feel like they want this guy, Jason, he's more of a project than Joe Tryon is. So we get Tryon in there as an instant, more of an instant impact edge rusher for Baltimore. 28, we got the Saints and cornerback is their biggest need. And I think we're going to take Greg Newsom out of Northwestern. Um, he's had some injury issues, but otherwise he's looked really good. Uh, put him out there next to Marshawn Lattimore. That's real nice. They could maybe go receiver, but again, you know, deeper receiver class, maybe they grab it later, but I wouldn't be shocked with the receiver here. Um, but Greg Newsom feels like a good value here at 28 for the Saints. Now it's time for my Green Bay Packers and you know, I had a plan laid out here for this draft, but now when I look at the board, I almost feel differently. Um, I'll, we'll go inside my mind here. I'm thinking between Elijah Moore and J- Jameen Davis, Jamin da- Davis um, out of Kentucky. I mean, he just really interests me because he's he ran so well. He tested so well athletically, um, maybe still a little raw, but our linebackers have not been that good. But we also have Elijah Moore here who, you know, smaller, but he tested off the charts, ran like, was it 4-4, almost sub 4-4. So um, they really could use that guy coming out of the slot. This is a tough pick for me, but I think we're going to go Elijah Moore. I think we're just finally, we're going to do it. We're going to take a receiver in the first, um, give Rodgers a weapon, but, you know, it's the Packers. So maybe we draft another quarterback or a running back uh, they, they never cease to amaze me so but um elijah moore to the to the packers all right bills at 30 this guy probably fell too far as well jason Owe out of penn state freaky 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 but no production uh he's gonna take a bit to develop but i i really like this guy um he's got high potential bills could use a nice pass rusher like him i'm not sure how quickly he would be able to make an impact i mean mean, he'd probably get the opportunity honestly but um a guy with high upside at the end of the first year i think this is a really nice nice pick for buffalo ravens on the clock once again they got their edge rusher now we're going to grab a receiver they were trying to get guys they were trying to get galladay they were trying to get juju couldn't come around on him. So which receiver are we going to take? We got Tony at the top of the board here, but I'm going to go Terrace Marshall Jr. out of LSU. Uh, this is a guy I really like, you know, just in a class full of like smaller receivers. This is like the more bigger prototypical guy, really the only one of them at the top here. Um, 6'2", 200, uh, just an all around really good player. He was sort of hidden behind Jamar and you know Justin Jefferson but uh with with Chase opting out he got his time to shine he looked pretty good um obviously didn't have Burrow throwing up to him this year but we saw flashes out of him he tested well ran a 444 which at his his size is really nice um yeah we got it you gotta get um Lamar someone to throw the ball to you know we got Hollywood who's a deep threat but he doesn't have that guy that he can just target and feel confident about I feel like you know Terrace has had some issues with drops but uh, contested catch, just body control. He can really do it all. And I think this is a really nice fit for the Ravens. Last but not least, we have the Buccaneers, Super Bowl champions. I, I want to, man, this is another one. It's a tough one. I, I, I thought about it going back and forth. Right now I'm going between Barmore and Tony. I just think Tony would be so much fun in that offense. Um, you got Godwin and Evans outside, and then you just throw Tony over the middle to do fun things. But you got Barrymore here um, who's falling. You know, you've already got a really good defensive line, but Sue's probably in his last year. Uh, they re-signed Vita Vea. I, th- I think we're going to – I want to go Kadarius Tony, but we're going to go Christian here. A um, little ad lib on my draft list, but – um, just keep building what they've been doing. The defense is what, you know, Tom Brady was really good, but the defense was unbelievable. And I think you just continue to do that. You add a guy like Barrymore there. Um, 
you just sort of reload and keep going forward towards the future. So he'll fill that and Dominican Sue role nicely the, the year after. So yeah, that's the draft. We'll run through it here. We will take a look. Um, Lawrence, to the Jags, Wilson to the Jets, Lance, the 49ers just scroll through here. I mean, it gets a little weird. I don't know if both these teams go offensive linemen. I don't know which corner they're going to take. Uh, Phillips may be a reach. I kind of like this area. Mac Jones probably fell too far. I'm already nitpicking my own draft. Uh, the receivers at 16 and 18, maybe a little bit. But after that, I feel like this is all pretty good values, um, pretty good spots for these guys. But um, all the way through, and the Packers get a receiver. So, yeah, I hope you guys like that. Um, this will probably be up uh, before – it should be up before the draft, hopefully. So, um, yeah, I'm interested to see how well I do with my picks. Probably going to be a lot wrong, but hopefully I, I got a few of these right. Um, and then after this, you know, we'll ha I'll have post-draft content, um, reviewing all the draft, all the how the teams did, and – I'll be doing that on my podcast. I talked about the Keel Pro Dynasty show, link below. Uh, I'll be going through all that for Dynasty fantasy football purposes. So if you play that, definitely check it out because um, it's always interesting to see how values change for players after the draft. So we all have sort of have our rookie rankings coming in, but, you know, landing spot can change things. You know, Terrace Marshall going to the Ravens, eh, Elijah Moore to the Packers, stonks. So... Thanks, guys, for tuning in. If you want to see more content like this with me on camera uh, doing stuff, uh, let me know if you like this. It's a little different. Uh, my first time really doing this on the channel, but uh, there will be more film coming probably maybe a little bit later this summer. But for sure, once once the season starts up in the fall, I'll be back on the grind and you guys will see a ton of uploads. So don't worry, I'm not ab abandoning the film content. Uh, if you want more film to watch, definitely check out the Dynasty Nerds uh, website, the Nerd Herd. You get access to their film room, which has all 22 and everything. So obviously got to shout out them. So uh, as always, uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you guys next time.